Mark. Well, this is it. The last of my things I'm doing for what would have been my book series or video game trilogy had I had the time to do any of this. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. Again, it's my health that's keeping me from being able to do any of this. There's just no way, and I don't have I have limited time. There's no way I can complete all of this, so I'm giving everybody a bird's eye view of the whole project. And this is it. This is the world overview. This is the thing I came up with. Um, I wanted to create my own uh, superhero universe, and this, and I called my characters heroics instead of uh instead of superheroes because marvel and dc own that <laughs> believe it or not um the world is pretty much a combination of a modern and fantasy tropes uh the, and we'll get into the cities as i get into it but i'm gonna give you guys a bird's eye look at it this is gonna be a longer video than the last few which basically went over the first nine books or three games however you want to look at it uh first nine books the only nine books that would have been a part of the whole thing um Welcome to Morn. Morn is its own world. Um, it is a world where the races go for a last chance at a future. It's where they're put, and the Pantheon do put people out there to judge worlds, whether they... Uh, some races have faced mass extinction from external forces. Uh, some just the planet's not stable enough to continue. And some of them, through their own volition, have almost destroyed their worlds, kind of like us. Um, but... That's not the message I'm trying to send. This is a haven for those races that have either lost their homes, and some of them are actually here, as the next point makes, willingly. They were brought here because they were found to be likable and get along with others, and they came here and found a new way, and they enjoyed the new way. So they stayed and became part of Morn. Um, it was brought about by the Pantheon and the Fates, and the Pantheon are, go are the gods, what's left of them. There's quite a few that are still around, like Odin and Zeus and Orcus and whatnot. But they, as you find out, they we'll get into them in a little bit. Um, Earth exists in its current state, <laughs> modern Earth. Some of these heroes actually do herald from Earth, and... Uh, the Pantheon have actually reached out and saved some humans from some catastrophes. They've saved uh, that that Roman Lost Legion was brought here. Some of the citizens of Hiroshima and, Nagash and Nagasaki were brought here. As you'll see, I have a city called Nagashima. Um, there are humans here, and they've adapted pretty well. Um, uh, Earth is there, though, in its modern iteration. In fact, hey, whenever somebody creates something, a literary work here, or in Meant something or whatnot, it they kind of uh, quote unquote borrow it or make it something that works there. It's kind of funny. They have MP3 players that play everything. They don't have, <laughs> they don't s separate between. They take their operating systems, their computers are pretty much whatever works best um, for the situation. They're, they have little literal supercomputers. Um, uh, and, and you'll find out what that's all about when I get to the last one of the last points here. Um, the aspects are basically blank slates until a race takes it as a home, and then they make it their own, and it pretty much molds to that race, whatever race that is. Uh, some heroic groups, or even just heroics, are given their own blank slate to actually live on, um, depending on what the need. The Walkers of the Storm have their own world, literally, and it's a big world, so... But they live close enough together that they're kind of neighbors, so which is kind of cool. And they've let a few people like uh, uh, Kazal and her wife live there, as does uh, Ariane's sister. They live on that world, even though they're not part of the Walkers. Uh, it's kind of cool. Yes, that's where Gertrude makes her home, and um, Pratchett, <laughs> of course, because Pratchett's the pet of Kazal and Ari. Um, uh Prison worlds are aspects, <clears throat> and they hold murderers, rapists, hardcore racists, and other forgivable criminals. There's an element I left off there that's pretty bad that is there. That goes along with the rapist aspect. They, they are all there. Um, they are all there. If you do one of those crimes, you're pretty much done. You, the society won't accept you again. You're put on one of those planets, and believe it or not, when you die on a prison world, um, you pretty much are going down. 
<laughs> downtown, as it were. Whatever version of heck you want to that race adheres to, that's where they're going. Uh, uh, tech and magic coexist, but do not normally function well together. There are exceptions. There's actually heroes that uh, use both. And there's a few that I listed in the titles. The, the, the fates early on decreed that the pantheon, the gods, are not permitted to directly interfere in Morn's affairs, but they are able to make heroics and bless, and not bless, because blessings don't work, because that describes worship. There's no worship here. It's all belief. It's all based on belief, not worship. Worship is gone. There is no worshiping of gods here. Um, heroics have come about through many different means, and not just given powers by the gods there's some that have, were born with talents there's some that have invented things and it, it basically typical tropes of superhero world but predominantly this world is based primarily in magic although there are some tech-based heroes as i have come as i have put across um uh, uh literary gods were created by the pantheon to oversee some of the aspects and help create heroics now the literary gods are they the gods since they weren't allowed to they had to come up with something an overly powerful force to actually rein things in if necessary the only problem was when they made these authors for the most part they're authors <laughs> um from various races and whatnot it just so happens that the, the pantheon since a lot of them dealt with Earth, fell in love with some of the literary works there and they were tricked into making one of the gods of the core aspect uh, so on the core aspect, you have Edgar Allan Poe, William Shakespeare, and the one Loki tricked them into making H.P. Lovecraft. So yes, Cthulhu and all that pantheon now exists, but Lovecraft was able to rein it all in and have that pantheon make peace with the pantheon. So they're actually working with, uh, except for Cthulhu, who's forced to sleep, and his race that goes along with him, the Cthulhu, uh, they did not spring about because of Lovecraft. They have always existed, and they didn't realize that Lovecraft fought, quickly finds out that he was just a channel, uh, uh, but because he became a literary, the channel woke up everything. And the and Azatoth tried to destroy Morn, and over the city of Innsmau, there's a scar, and we'll get into the cities later, and the scar is actually a direct link to Azatoth, which is crazy to think um there's actually the book that deals with the whole madness aspect of in smell which is my nod to lovecraft and his city um currency is outlawed eh, the way of life is deeds for deeds you got to do stuff for other people well, see what i'm doing here on youtube this would count as deeds so if i get more views on this <laughs> each view counts as hey i've done something even if it's just a view for myself i'm still doing something um, that pays for your, that literally, that's earns you electricity, that earns you your roof over your head. No one's going to take your roof over your head. They might frown upon you for not doing, be contributing, but they're not going to frown upon you for taking a day off or whatnot. There's, it's great because you walk into the store it, and say they're out of Coca-Cola on their shelf. Oh, okay. I'll help you restock the shelf. Oh, oh, we're out of stock. Oh, uh, and all the, allocation centers are close by so you could say okay let me go get you some and i'll get them and i'll deliver it to the back and then i'll restock the shelf for you real quick boom you've paid for everything that you get in that grocery store for literally the week <laughs> at that point in time you are not allowed to be greedy about it you basically take for yourself and you don't get greedy about it um if you're doing it for a family the society there will know that, but if you're taking too much, they're going to go, hey, you can't do that without helping out, and you can't be a jerk about it. You have to help out if you're going to take a lot. You're going to replace everything that you're taking before you take it. It's literally how things work. Um, and you're like, oh, well, how do people work the fields and whatnot? They do, and it's actually kind of a relaxing exercise, and people treat it as a vacation. It's like, hey, let's go out and help out with the fields for a week or so. Hey, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, go pick corn and whatnot. It's actually kind of fun. They make it into a fun thing to do, and it, it, you'd be surprised. There's people that do it on a daily basis because they want to, because they like being closer to the nature. It's just... Literally, I took Gene Roddenberry's version of uh, that he created for Earth in the future with the Federation and whatnot, 
and put a different spin on it. Uh, most, and here's the other thing. Most citizens here can defend themselves from common st stupid crime. So if you try to mug somebody, uh, you're going to be either blasted in the face by either some sort of magic or technology, depending on who you're trying to mug. It's not a good idea. <laughs> it's not a good idea. <sighs> okay, that's it for the overview of the world itself. So let's move on to a little something else. And the fun thing, this is an example of races. There's more, <laughs> believe it or not, because I run a D&D &D campaign with a group and I gave them, here's a list of races you can become. I have different versions of elves. There's more than this. There's Aether, Blight, Dark, and Wood. You've seen Blight, Dark, and Wood represented in the characters and novels. Uh, there's dwarves. There's Volcano, Mountain, and Blood Dwarves. Blood Dwarves are red caps. They're not very nice. Um, there's orcs, swamp cave and core, hares, um, which are bipedal rabbits. They're not animals, as I'll get to down below. Hares have been around for a while. There's taper, wig, and lop types of hares. Uh, taper have sharp pointed ears. Wigs have a tuft of hair, kind of like my nod to big wig, but there's a whole race of them. Uh, lops have the drooping ears. Uh, grew are void or pale grew. They're, again, not related to Zork. No. Not at all. Uh, they have no ears. Yeah, I have a description for them if you want to go read up on Freya Kane or Dawn Clover. They're both grew. There's Taily Poe, and there is a, uh, what is it, Rova Maltese is a Taily Poe. There's Deep Ones, Chupacabra, Ogopogo, the Tarasque. Uh, different versions of satyrs like the Goat and the Elk, uh, Bandersnatch, Cthulhu, Human, Dragon, Genshin, Naga, Animals. Animals are different because they used to be animals, but they have, uh, through some magic or chicanery, mostly from druid perspective, they've been given uh, bipedal forms. Some just individually, some as a race. Moths and butterflies were given their own world, and I didn't get into them because I didn't have time, but there is a very cool character that I didn't get to showcase that I might do a special thing on later on. Um, that comes from there. Her name's Cherry Napalm. I love the frick out of that character. I wish I had had time to do something and flesh something out with her. But yeah, you've seen examples of them. There's the Phoenix, the Moo, the Wendigo, the Lune, who I who's a char another character I didn't have a chance to go over it's character it's a race that's born on uh, one of the three moons that circles around Morn the core aspect at least uh, they thrive on lunar light and there's a character named Valentine Blush which I wish again might do a special thing with these characters because uh, there's a few more I want to do there's Octaverix the Kitsune and the Warren who used to be elves but have now taken on more wolf-like aspect. <sighs> okay. Lastly, we get to the cities of the core aspect, which is where a bulk of these stories take place. There's Atlas Central, which is pretty much walk outside, look at your modern cities of Chicago, Los Angeles, New York. Literally, that's Atlas Central. Um, uh, you got the flashing lights, you got vehicles, and again, ve there's weird thing about my vehicles. Everything for your, a person is walking distance, so most vehicular transportation is public. So if you need a ride somewhere, you call them. And again, deeds for deeds apply. It's, hey, you need me to get you a Coke or some dinner since you gave me a ride? Cool, I'll go in and get it for you. Because you're not paying for it, you might as well just go get them the stuff. Usually the driver is going to go, let me go in with you. And they might need help restocking. Now you see how Deeds for Deeds works. It's kind of cool because everybody gets on a positive vibe note on that. Uh, there's Nagashima, which is uh, kind of a modern feudal Japan. There are samurai there. There are ninja there. It's kind of cool. Uh, Roanoke. <clears throat> yep, that Roanoke. Uh, that's actually a hub of witches and wizards and whatnot. There's Atlantis which is both above and below sea. I don't deal, I wasn't planning on dealing with anything on that in that city, but it is there. There's Feywood, that's home of uh, William Shakespeare and Oberon and all that whatnot. They exist right there. Uh, Usher, which is the home of Edgar Allan Poe, of course. 
Uh, Innsmouth, the home of H.P. Lovecraft. There's It's the City of Madness. That's what it's called. Usher is actually uh, the city where most of the supernatural, like vampires and uh, the like, live. Uh, Avalon, believe it or not, is not what you think it is. It's actually a hub for the hares, and it's very technologically driven. And it has, it's the home of the one per- portal that links to Earth. And they guard it like crazy you can't slip through that portal on accident and there's no story that would allow for that uh they go there occasionally and usually the pantheon are the one going through to save some aspect of earth in one fashion or another um or bring some people in like pacific misfit was brought in through there um nurembega nurembega deep underground Nuremberga. it's the home of the core orcs and their queen and believe it or not the ninja or withers came about from there um and that's it that's my overview of my world of the aspects of morn and i i again wish i could do more with this i really do i wish i had the time I wish I had the health, but I don't. I hope somebody in the future can come along and contact the people I'm going to leave this in charge of this, and I or they can find somebody to actually do something with it. I don't know. That's all subject to whatever's in the air. Thank you guys for watching. Again, there might be some special episodes. There's, there's a few characters I didn't get to get to which didn't get their own book or spotlight or anything, but I still thought they were cool concepts that got left on the shelf, got left on the cutting room floor, as it were. I will see you guys in the near future. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.